Hill Spring of 2019 wasn't a lot different than other springs. We had a big drought, huge drought in 2018. And then it started raining in October and it never shut off. I mean, all fall was wet, the spring was wet, but you still have your management plans in place, your farming plans, and you know, you know it's gonna dry out to where you get time to do this. And, and really it was probably middle to end of March when we were snow goose hunting that the first disaster struck and you know that was a huge abundance of snow i mean a, a huge snowpack in nebraska dakotas and then they had a fast warm-up and a big rain on top of it like clockwork as winter turns to spring in states like nebraska missouri and kansas heavy rains send the missouri river surging flooding remaining a major concern for areas along the missouri river in kansas missouri iowa and nebraska and missouri governor mike parson has now issued a state of emergency I mean, it was tragedy from, from Norburn all the way up the Missouri River to the northwest um, at the end of March. Uh, and we were kind of in the, not, well, we weren't in the clear, but we were looking a lot better at that point. The river started to recede a little bit. We caught a little bit of a dry spell, and I think it was end of April, maybe. Uh, I think it was the 25th of April, I started planting corn. I planted the 25th, 26th. And then it started raining, and then it kept raining, and then it kept raining. The flood of 19 is proven to be uh, quite the battle. I mean, it's, it's just massive. I mean, everything we have up at Sumner is, is well underwater. Uh, down here on the Missouri River at the Grand, I mean, it takes 35 minutes to get here normally. and. Uh, with all the road closures and everything like that. We've been driving for three hours now and we're probably 20 minutes out yet. I don't know how this, this levee's holding. I've uh, been bagging it for three days. Uh, we had water coming over the top yesterday and they got it, got it stopped up. And I don't know if we can hold it, but you know, it's just one of those deals, you know, I'd rather I'd rather step up to the plate and strike out swinging for the fence than, than never get in the game at all. Just sit there and watch it all go. Uh, river's supposed to raise another, another eight tenths of a foot in the next two days. I mean, it's not even supposed to crest till, till Sunday. You know, to see what was going on down there when we were sandbagging and, and knowing that it wasn't just our area, it was all up and down the Missouri River, it gives you faith in humanity. I mean, people, total strangers coming together to, for a common cause of helping out their neighbors. And to see something like that is, is really, really cool. I mean, you, you forge a lot of good friendships in tough times. And to me, it's, it's a tribute to the Midwest and the, and the people that live here. I mean. Drop everything you're doing to go help your neighbor, no questions asked, uh, whether you know your neighbor or not. then on it's just been constant constant mess the water crested and started coming back the other way um, we were able to to get a hoe into some places and cut some levees to get rid of water in a hurry we were lucky we caught a caught a dry spell it was dry and hot and it dried up relatively quickly and the only good thing about planting that time of year you know early summer is it's hot and, and you stick it in the ground it's going to be up and four and a half, five days. 
Well, it is the end of June and we're finally gonna get started planting some duck food. This would normally, if you had plans A, B, C, and D, this would be somewhere down around like Z, planting the end of June, early July. Going in pretty good. A little bit rough, but the boxes are staying pretty silent. They're not jumping around a whole lot. Looks a lot better than it did two weeks ago, I know that. After the floods and whatnot, usually back that population off some. High 27s, 28,500 seeds per acre. Plants don't have to get as get as tall, especially in a shallow water area like this. It seems like the higher the population, the taller the plant gets because they're trying to outgrow the one next to them and get to that sunlight. There's 80,000 kernels in one of these bags. When we're planting late, we're kind of switching down to short season corn, which basically what that does, it's gonna mature in a shorter amount of time because the thing that we're running into now is the potential for an early frost that's gonna kill it before that plant matures. So if you've got a you know full season corn, say that's 114 days, you're gonna need 114 days worth of heat units, and that's almost four months, which we, we don't have that luxury right now. Um, so we're switching varieties and going down to the shorter season stuff, you know, 85, 90 day, um, just to try to give it a little bit better chance. When I was able to get back in and replant, you know, you've, you've got to consider how you get to the blinds because of the federal baiting regulations. I mean, you can't be knocking corn down on your way to your blind. You know, the hunter's trying to get out there. Uh, but it's easier, just go ahead and plant the whole field rather than trying to pick your planter up, put it down, skip this, skip that. You know, you gotta get back in there before that corn gets an ear on it. And what I do is I'll spray. And I'll spray a path to the blind that's gonna kill that corn and make a nice walkway. And then I'll spray my hole but where I want my decoys to be, I'll spray that and do it before it, anything ever gets in ear, uh, just to make sure that you're staying within the guidelines. You know, it was pretty, pretty crazy walking into the nines for the first time after the flood. I mean, all I could see was sand dunes and I mean, it just looked like a war zone and the blind was destroyed and I kind of stood against my favorite tree that I always stand against outside the blind and just kind of looking up through that hole and you know, just thinking back on all them awesome memories you've had in there and, and knowing it's going to be a long time if ever before you see them again. You know right now we're five weeks away from teal opener and I don't know roughly yeah, three months away from duck season opener. I think things look, as a whole, they look really good. Um, a lot better than I would have anticipated a month ago. The moist soil response has been incredible. You know, the crops are, are behind, obviously, but the biggest fear is all the levee breaches that are still out there. And we look too good right now to, to flood again, but we're not out of the woods with all the breaches. <laughs> 